guys, today I'm gonna to show you this Keystone Auto Focus Projector. Check this out. I have it linked to Bluetooth on my phone and it is filling this bedroom up with this beautiful video of this cat going through the wilderness. It is absolutely amazing. Look at the projector itself. It is super duper high quality and has a large lens that it is putting this out through. Bluetooth, like I'm doing with the screen mirroring, this also has its own remote, and I will continue with showing you the other settings. See quite more of how the pixels are. That is what it looks like. It's super duper clear. Um, it is just like... So this is your remote, and you have a pointer here. If your pointer is not on, you're just gonna click this button. So the main thing you need to know is if you want to connect to your phone via iOS, um, you press that button and Android, you would press this button. So for me, I'm gonna press iOS. And once I've gotten out of that, it has no longer, it has stopped screen mirroring. Press this button right here and you see the option to screen mirror. You'd press that and it will take about 20 seconds to connect. And then it will put a check mark there and I noticed that it will not screen mirror. It will not screen mirror until you press this. You have to press that to put the projector into the screen mirroring function. Um, onto the other settings, like I said, you would press this button if you wanted to use Miracast to connect through Android, um, but you can also use HDMI. So you can use this thing to project like your video games, your Xbox, your TV, and whatnot. Um, let's go back. This is the back button. This is what you would press to connect it through HDMI. Um, it says HDMI 1 up there, but it's blank because there's nothing plugged in. We're going to exit this screen. And then there's also a USB function. Now this would be if you plugged in something like a flash drive into this to view it, but all of these are empty because there's nothing inside it. Onto some of the more important settings. Um, these buttons don't do anything because I don't have anything loaded on this device. I don't know if you can see my cursor going around. So you can see up here that it already has the Bluetooth connection. You can see here that it has Wi-Fi. <coughs> We're going to go to the settings. Now I'm going to show you we have network. Um, I already have it on my Wi-Fi up here. Um, but you could also do wired or you could use a hotspot. We're going to go back, go to Bluetooth. This is where the remote is connected. Let me bring you just a little bit closer. So this is where the remote itself is connected and you could scan for other equipment. I tried that with my phone, but um, that isn't how you connect your phone. So that wasn't going to work. Um, there's loads of settings in this projection area. Um, I'm going to scroll up here. This is the automatic focusing. When it boots up, it automatically focuses to the size of the room. Um, you also have disposal autofocus and then you can press on this and make it autofocus. So this is its autofocus settings. So it's gonna figure out what it wants to do um, and it's gonna get it the clearest way so that it re-cleared itself. So that's the manual focus if you wanna manually um, bring lungs in and out. The reason it got smaller is because I had a manual scaling. This is the scale options. So it is at this size now, but it gets as small as, well, you can imagine, it gets really small. And then it gets as big as this. But of course, if you brought the projector further away or closer, it would edit that as well. So I love that so much. We're gonna keep it at this size. I'm gonna press the back button. You can also go directly to the home this way. These are your focusing buttons. I don't know if those, yeah, that's your focusing button. See, you can bring it closer or you can get it focused. That's manual controls right here. You also have volume as well, a power button and a Bluetooth. Um, so let's continue down here. The open automatic ladder correction, self-dynamic ladder correction. This is the automatic obstacle avoidance. That's why it wouldn't um, have those guys in there. But like I said, you might have stuff in your room and you still want to use it at a large size. Automatic screen entry, automatic ladder correction, manual ladder correction, trapezoid correction test. I haven't used all of these settings. You have the formal investment. You can tell it what angle it's going to be projecting at. You can tell it whether it's going to be hanging and it will um, change the way that it projects. Let's go back. From there, you can also set the language right there, the input method. You can also set the date. And you can also go in system and upgrade it, but it is up to date. 
You can also go in application and look at what media is installed in there. And you can click on other settings and see the boot source option, the power on, the schedule shutdown, and the screen saver wait time before it goes into its screen saver mode. And in about, you also have the model number, the system version, and the Android version that it supports. It supports Android 12 and its IP address, Wi-Fi Mac address, and Bluetooth address. Overall, this is super duper easy to navigate. Um, it took me maybe 30 minutes to figure out what everything did, and I'm just such a fan of this. It's so cool because I can use it inside and outside. I can use it outside on just a brick wall when the sun goes down, or I can use it here in this bedroom that has a large open space. I'm just such a fan of this projector. It also have all these buttons on here that gives you a pretty good amount of controls. Let me show you what the back of the device looks like. Those are your inputs. You have two USBs, um, an Ethernet cable, I believe that is, and an HDMI, and even a headphones. So it has very powerful speakers. Overall, it's so, so cool, and I am just so impressed.